So at Cyclops, basically, uh, we approach every DC patient in a systematic and a multidisciplinary way where we have discussions daily on cases from all over the world. So uh, this is a very interesting case. This uh, came from Navi Mumbai. This case is from uh, Dr. Vaishali Sangole, and uh, she will be joining me uh, later in the uh, discussion. So let us see the history of this patient. So the date of presentation is 22nd of Feb. So a 50 year old male presented to us with a history of uh, spinning vertigo. The first episode was two weeks before. In the evening, after office, patient in his washroom experienced a severe head spinning lasting for a minute with palpitations. On second episode, it was after a week on looking to the left with an extreme neck movement, he experienced head spinning for less than a minute. The third episode was yesterday, which was on bending forward again for less than a minute. <clears throat> so coming to the case history of this patient, he is a known case of hypothyroidism and is on thyroxine 150 gram, uh, microgram. He is hypertensive and he is on medication. He also suffers from insomnia. The neurological examination was normal except for Ertenberger test in which he swayed to the right side by more than 30 degrees. The ENT examination was also normal, but the patient complained of left ear tinnitus since one month and the puritan audiometry was normal. So keeping in mind the spinning vertigo, the duration of less than a minute on bending forward and turning to right, we proposed some differentials, differentials like horizontal BPPV, or vestibular paroxysmia, or vestibular migraine, a positional crisis, and benign intracranial hypertension. So we proceeded with VNG. <clears throat> so we did a VNG in which saccard pursuit optokinetic stimulation was normal. There was no spontaneous nystagmus with and without fixation. The provocative tests like hyperventilation, high frequency head shake, and well salva were normal. There was no positional nystagmus on Dexalpike, macular pagnini, yaw, pitch, and roll. Subjective visual vertical and midpoint were normal. And head impulse test was also normal. So we also had some uh, investigations like uh, MRI brain was also normal. And 2D echo showed left ventricular ejection fraction of 60%, which is fairly normal. And ECG was reported normal. So uh, after the VNG is normal and other investigation are normal, we contacted uh, Dr. Vaishali ma'am. She will join us for the moment. Dr. Vaishali Sangole is an associate professor in Department of ENT from Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Health Sciences, Navi Mumbai. So next, she will tell us what the <clears throat> what was the findings. Warm greetings of the day to all. What to do when the VNG is normal? Is it going to go back to the ear looking for the cause? And this is exactly what need not to be done as a normal VNG rules out peripheral vestibular cause and that the cause is not in the ear. After forwarding the history details in the pre-designed performa, as well describing each episode in detail, Dr. Pratik emphasized on, how did the patient express his symptoms? What was the description of the patient in his own words? For the reason that vertigo to an individual patient means differently to specify, did he describe this as dizziness, as a feeling of being dazed, or experiencing lightheadedness? Vertigo, which is typically described as a spinning sensation by the patient, being in a world, dizziness on change of position in bed or on getting up from the bed. Imbalance, which could be disequilibrium, floating sensation, as if about to fall, etc. Syncopal attack, like a blackout, blurring of vision, cold body wave, fainting or an actual fall. Our patient typically described this incident as a head spin, which was an experience of an internal feeling of spin, not from the surrounding. Advice is given and followed. The first advice was to take a cardiological opinion. Who might be asked for a triple T test, which is a tilt table test or a head tilt test. This was based on the following guidelines. First, in view of the MRI brain and the VNG being normal, to look for a cardiological reason. Second, for the patient having a long-standing history of hypertension. Third, 
the tail table test for the cost to be related to heart rate and blood pressure to rule out orthostatic hypertension or orthostatic senko fourth as the halter monitoring in the previous hospitalization after the first episode showed decreased heart rate of 50 per minute second mr angiography in view of the onset of complaint with left ear tinnitus which was 3 weeks before the onset of vertigo to rule out a neurovascular compression or acoustic neuroma third a repeat pta with tinnitus matching to rule out early venous disease and to alter antihypertensive medicines to avoid nocturnal diuresis from night to a morning dose towards the gauze ct coronary angiography as advised after the cardiological opinion revealed a circumferential soft plaque in the mid right coronary artery causing moderate that is 70 to 80% of stenosis and a circumferential soft plaque in mid circumflex artery causing moderate to severe which was 70 to 80% of stenosis towards the diagnosis as per the cardiologist advises presently the patient is on eco screen which is 75 mg and tell me certain h 80 mg once a day awaited is his angioplasty in view of the present lockdown what is not awaited before the lockdown is his diagnosis i thank dr pratik for giving all the guidelines and his every time help towards the approach not only in this case but many other i have special gratitude to dr shrinivas sir i thank team cyclops mumbai mr akhand and thanks equipage mr shekhar patnaik thank you everyone stay safe thank you so much ma'am so now i will uh, take uh, less than 5 minutes and conclude <clears throat> so in view of new findings so can you hear us so after uh, uh, reassessing the patient's history uh, new findings and other documents let us see what is the findings in a nutshell so the patient is having a spinning sensation with palpitation it is not associated with vomiting or nausea the duration was for a minute only the aggravating factors are none and uh, especially not positional the ct coronary angiography showed 80% of the stenosis in right coronary artery the patient had a history of bradycardia and the ecg is showing sinus bradycardia <clears throat> and the patient is a, is having lot of cardiac risk factors so coming to the differentials so we can rule out uh, bppv because it is not aggravated by position and the dixolpic macular pregnancy test was negative so we have ruled out bppv now it could be a transient ischemic attack also but if it was the case then we should have found something on the mri brain and we would have seen some nystagmus and some dysarthria also so tia is also ruled out now we have another syndrome which is rotate rotational vertebral artery syndrome because the second event was on turning to the left but the patient the patient's mri would have been shown uh, would have been showing us one sided vertebral hypoplastic artery and other side the dominant artery and the presentation would be on the same side only either it would be on the left side or it could be on the right side so now the other causes which remain after the normal vng and after uh, removing all the other differentials other cardiac causes so the most common cardiac cause is acute myocardial infarction but the markers were normal orthostatic hypotension cardiac sinus syncope and neurocardiogenic syncope so we searched the literature and we found something close to cardiac nature of the episodes of dizziness may be the awareness of palpitations the sudden onset of paroxysmal arrhythmias or the presence of a known cardiac history so in our patient the episodes of dizziness are sudden and it is for a sh shorter duration the patient was also aware of palpitation and there was a known cardiac history 
This line has been taken from Oxford Test Book of Vertigo, page number 289. So the next thing is, in cases of cardiac arrhythmia, dizziness is la lasting for seconds. It may be accompanied by palpitations and it can be caused by bradycardia or tachycardia. So now we have all the findings and we can say that cardiac arrhythmia or the paroxysmal cardiac arrhythmia might be a cause for this patient. This line has been taken from a dizziness book from uh, Dr. Bronstein. So to conclude, 10% of the patient with primary cardiovascular disease may experience vertigo as a dominant or a presenting symptoms. This line has been taken from Newman Toker, 2008. That spinning vertigo can be a feature of primary cardiovascular disease also, because when a patient comes to us and say that I am having a spinning vertigo, we think that it is a vestibular cause only. But no, there are publication, there are evidences that spinning vertigo can be a feature of cardiovascular disease also. So in our case, bradycardia, palpitation, and vertigo of few minutes can be a feature of cardiac arrhythmia, which includes both tachy and brady. In our patient, it was brady arrhythmia, especially in cases of coronary artery stenosis. This line has been taken from Oxford textbook of vertigo and imbalance. The most common cardiac causes are vertigo. Causes of vertigo can be acute MI, orthostatic hypertension, carotid sinus syncope, and cardiac arrhythmia. So, if you got a normal VNG, what you should do? <clears throat> Actually, if you got a normal VNG, you have ruled out major chunk of vestibular disorder by variety of powerful VNG tests. So, if the history is very specific, then you have to dig deep, reassess the patient, retake the history, call the patient again, see all his document, and look for other causes of vertigo, like uh, central causes, neurological causes, cardiogenic causes and the other atypical causes of vertigo, which are mentioned as other causes of vertigo. And don't ever hesitate to take the help from other super specialties. So thank you very much. Thank you, Srinivasa. Thank you, Cyclops team.